Hi everybody. It's another terrific Tuesday. Glad to be meeting you here. Um, I don't know if you, I assume everybody has tomorrow off. I don't know if anybody is excited as I am, but it's really nice to have a day off in the middle of the week. So I am looking forward to our day off tomorrow. Hi there. Oh, you have school tomorrow. Laura, I am so sorry. I, my heart is breaking for you. I actually, I like having the Monday because it gives us three days off. But I have to say, oh, okay, now I feel bad. I'm sorry. Okay, well, your dear little rocket over here has tomorrow off. And um, still give me some love and some hearts out there. I'm actually hoping I'm going to be able to sleep. This is what I always hope when we have a day off is I think maybe I'm going to be able to see, sleep. Hi there from Florida. And you know what happens every time I still end up waking up really early in the morning. So I don't know who I'm fooling, but tomorrow um, I'll be thinking about you guys who are teaching while I'm maybe snoozing, but probably not snoozing, even though I really would like to be snoozing. So uh, good. What are you, I, I'm interested to know what you guys are doing to celebrate your veterans. That's really awesome. Um, our family is actually going tomorrow. It's not a Veterans Day, but we have some shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child, and so we're going to be filling those boxes tomorrow. So that's what we're planning on doing. I'm going to try to adjust. Okay, so I still have not gotten any high-tech equipment here, guys, and thank you for being patient with me. So you're currently sitting on my easel that has the paper, and not very carefully. I have MacGyvered this, and and I love Operation Christmas Child, too. So I'm taking my kids tomorrow, and that's what we're doing. Oh, you're making cards. That's awesome. I should probably do something like that with them, too. Maybe we'll do both. Any other ideas, throw them my way. So anyway, if you um, if there's a big crash at some point and you guys uh, fall to the ground, it's because, well, let me, let me show you what I've done. I, I really have. So this, this is what I invented here. Uh, this is my easel, and I have... Um, this, these couple of baskets here and then I've got this thing laying across and these little pads of paper and this little bar are to help hold up my phone. So, um, hi Dominic. Uh, so yeah, so this is what I've been doing for about the last 15 minutes was figuring out how I'm going to set up this camera. It seems to be sitting there. And so hopefully it'll stay that way and we could go ahead and get started. So for those of you joining me, my name's Andrea Schindler. I'm from Whole Brain Teaching, Whole Brain Teachers United. And if you, <laughs> you're welcome. It's amazing what we do to try to make things work in our classroom, right? That's what we do every day. Um, and I am happy you guys are joining me here today. The last several weeks I've been talking about power cards, but I've had a lot of people asking about Biffy tunes. So I'm gonna pop pause for a bit on the power cards and talk for a few weeks about the Biffy Tunes. Now, if you're looking for the Biffy Tunes, you're in luck if you go to the Whole Brain Teaching website, which is www.wholebrainteaching.com. There's actually a download of the Biffy Tunes, and you guys are in luck because the Biffy Tunes are now in full color. But what you're going to notice is I have the older version, which was the black and white, and I had a very artistic parent who was very kind and colored them really nicely for me. So that's really great. But we'll go ahead and we'll get started. And I'm going to be moving you around a little bit, so I hope you don't fall off. But I want to scoot you up a little bit, so hopefully you can see just a few of my words here. Let's take a look. Hi there. Um, yeah. Obviously, I'm not going to be adding video camera expert to my list of things I'm super great at. But there we go. Hopefully, that is a little bit of our Biff, my Biffy Tune wall for so far, what we've done so far in the school year. So basically what we do is at the very beginning of the school year, personally I start out with one word a week. That's a teacher choice. But I start out with one word a week. And the way I introduce the word is I put the word up on the wall. So this is our word I. Now I'm gonna move it in a little bit closer because I want you to see that each of these Biffy Tunes has a picture and a word and a gesture. Okay, yes, there are Biffy Tune Word games, and we're going to get to that, but we won't get to it today. So keep tuning in. 
So here is, and there's actually, there's, um, there's even a PowerPoint that has the Biffy Tunes on it, so you can play a super speed game with them there as well. Okay, so here is, this is our little dog here, and he's saying I. So the gesture for the word I is I. So at the beginning of the year, when I introduce the word, I'm going to put the word up here on the wall, and then I'm going to do a gesture. Now, I also sing spell the words to help the kids learn, and I have one tune for all the words because I'm not really great and crafty at remembering lots of tunes, but I can remember one tune. And I've done this before at conferences. I have not done this before live, so you guys all are going to be blessed with my terribly horrible singing voice. But this is how we do it. If I was in a conference, I'd make you guys join me, then you can drown me out. So this is my awkward, not American Idol moment right here. But this is how we would sing spell. So to sing spell, we would say, uppercase I, uppercase I, that spells I, that spells I, uppercase I, uppercase I, that spells I, that spells I. So I'm gonna have you go through, I'm gonna look at, we're gonna look at each of the Biffy Tune words and I'll give you the gesture for each. So we're gonna take a look here. We'll be going back and This is our word C. This is the word my. This is the word like. <laughs> Thank you. This is the word A, and this is the word that. How does this look? And I so wish you guys were here with me so you could be singing with me. But let's see. Let's move you a little bit here. All right. So for C, we would say S, S, E, E, S, E, E. That spells C. That spells C. S E E S E E that spells C that spells C M Y M Y that spells my that spells my M Y M Y that spells my that spells my thanks coach I wish you were here singing with me hello there dizzy dog okay moving on over here we have this ape and I don't know if you can see him over here, but he's over here and he's rubbing his stomach because he really likes ice cream. So he says, like, okay? So we're seeing spelling. We say L-I-K-E, L-I-K-E. That spells like, that spells like. L-I-K-E, L-I-K-E, that spells like, that spells like. I'm telling you, Kinder, we sing all day long. Yes, Coach. Do you hear that? They're inviting us to American Idol together. I think we could do a duet. Yeah, both of us together. I think that'd be awesome. Okay, the letter A, I'm going to zoom in on that A again. I want to see that right here, the hand is like this. Okay, because that in my hand right there, that is a, I, let me, difficult to hold this and show you this. And I've lost my little stand here. Let's see. I'm telling you. Before the end of this, I hope you guys do not fall to the ground. We're going to help that you don't fall to the ground. Okay, so A is like this, why? Because this is a circle right here. This is a circle. So we say A spells A, A spells A, that spells A, that spells A, A spells A, A spells A, that spells A, that spells A. And we'll do the last one in this row. I'm gonna scoot you down. Here we go, we've got that. And if you see, this is a little squirrel up there, and he's pointing at that butterfly. T-H-A-T, T-H-A-T, that spells that, that spells that. T-H-A-T, T-H-A-T, that spells that, that spells that. Okay, there's my lovely singing voice for all you guys. So what is the point of this? So each week, ah, I knew that was going to happen. Sorry about that. One of these days, I'm going to have this really high-tech equipment. I just don't know when that's going to happen. Okay, so I'm glad you guys are back and you didn't fall all the way to the ground. Okay, 
So each week we've added, an, <laughs> thank you, each week we've added a new word. And we go through every morning, and as part of our morning routine, we go through and we sing spell all of the words. Now, if you've noticed, here we go. Yes, Coach B, the most frequently cited words in the English language. It's a combination of the dolch and the fry list. 48 of those are available for you on the website at wholebrainteaching.com. Com. But not only that, Coach B is so awesome. He is actually in the uh, works of making some new illustrations and leveling these. If you notice on my wall, I have leveled these by color, but we're going to be leveling them very soon based on different animals. And so why are we doing it that way? Well, because we just this week finished our next set of words which is our blue words, which is our blue level. And so what happens when we move up to the next level and we finished the next level of words? Well, now I'm going to take away the picture and I just have the word. So just this week, I took away all the pictures and we have underneath these, just the word without the picture. Now when we're reviewing them, we're still doing the same thing. But now we've scaffolded it. We've we gave them the, the picture clue to help them cue in what the word is. And it also has a picture of the animal and the gesture. Well now we're going to take that away and just leave the word only. So we're reviewing this every morning before we start our morning message. Now. During our morning message is where we actually go through and we circle the Biffy Tune words. We look for them in our morning message and we count the Biffy Tune words. We also do oral writing with our Biffy Tune words. So for example, when we very first started and we just started with I. We did a bunch of oral writing practice where we did our capital gesture and we said, I run. And then we did, I jump. You can also add in your aunt and do two details. So then the students were trying to. They would say, I run and jump. I read and write. Ert. And so we are going through and doing our oral writing practice, which is really huge because we want the kids speaking in complete sentences. But I know that some of you out there were saying, I have a really hard time with them using gestures. Well, our Biffy tunes are going to be the first way that they're going to be able to come up with gestures. So we go from just oral writing, speaking complete sentences to speaking complete sentences using our brainy gestures. Yes. Um, we're going to use the word and for two details, and then when we get to our triple whammy, a triple whammy might look like this. So let's take I see my. So we would start with I see my friend, Zoop, my teacher, Zoop, and my classroom. Ert. So what's really great about this, those of you who tuned in with us last week with oral writing, um, the punctuation, the capitals, and the punctuation, but we're also going to do our sentences using our words and, because, and our triple whammy. Well, to start out, we want to give the kids some really easy sentence stems. So what's the easiest sentence stem for the kids to use? Our Biffy Tune words. If there's one thing that I love about whole brain teaching is how everything works together. We are constantly weaving in, in and out all of the materials and all of the strategies because they all combine together very, very well. Now, if you're wondering also about the color coding, with the color coding, I also send home with the kids a set of flashcards in the color. And once they know the set, once they know how to read and spell all the words on the flashcards, we test them and then they get to take home the next set of words which is on the next which is on the next color. What's really great about this is this is good for kids who like to self advance. So the students who are right with me who who are um, either at grade level or it could be a little bit behind grade level, they're going to be just working on the purple words. But for the students who are self-advancing, they're going to be moving on to the other levels of words before we even get there and before we even introduce them. 
What I've noticed though, I gotta tell you this guys, when I very first started teaching kindergarten and it was before using the Biffy Tunes, I was using the curriculum that we have. The curriculum that we have, which we actually don't even currently use at this point, but at that point it was one that we had to have fidelity to the program. We taught 18 sight words in the whole school year, 18, that was it. And it was reading them and it wasn't even spelling them. I gotta tell you guys, some of my lowest students only mastered 13 of those words, 13 out of the 18. And at the time I thought, well, that's not too bad until I started using the Biffy Tune words. Last year, my lowest student could read and spell orally 33 of the sight words. So can I get some hearts out there for that? Because that's significant progress to me. And what I love about the Biffy Tunes is the fact that they have, that because they're using their motor cortex with the movement, plus they're orally stay, saying it and they're hearing it, they're using so many of the modalities that I'm telling you it sticks. I have a student last year who at the beginning of the school year, what I found was really interesting, he actually has a processing um, learning disability, but let me tell you, and he's been retained and he's being tested and they're finding all these things out, but last year when he was in my class, what I found interesting was when we would point to the word, he could do the gestures for every word. So I gotta tell you, using gestures is very, very powerful. This is gonna help anywhere from your most struggling students, but even to your high students, because your high students aren't using the gestures to remember the word, they're using their gestures to stand up and do their speaking skills. So if you were with us a couple weeks ago when we talked about students standing up and leading out the answers, our kiddos need to stand up, they call the class, they do their mirror words, and then they're using their gestures and their brainies to um, lead the classroom in answers. Now what's the best way for them to come up with gestures? It's really hard to come up with gestures out there. Give me lots of hearts for that. Our students get stumped. What gestures can we use? Well right here, here are the most simple and most commonly used words in the English language. It's all here. Um, some still wanna just sit there. We do have problems with participation. I definitely would say with participation, you wanna go back to using your scoreboard and you wanna go back to using your super improvers wall. But I've been hearing a lot about participation out there. So I think next after we do the Biffy Tunes in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about some of the tricks and um, things that we've been using in the classroom. Chris, I'm very lucky. Biff and Chris Rexted and I, we meet just about every week, unless there's a lot of things going on, and we talk about different things that we can do to help our most challenging students. And so we've got a few tricks up our sleeve, and I'd love to share those with you. But in the meantime, I say, use that scoreboard. You're gonna to wanna to ping pong the students back and forth on the scoreboard. You also wanna give lots of positive praise. So for those students who are ready to stand up and lead the answer, you're saying, you're walking around as they're teaching their neighbor and they're using the gestures and they're teaching their neighbor their sentence and you're saying, oh, great job, I love those big gestures. When you're saying that, other students are gonna to wanna to join in because they wanna be praised as well. You're gonna find your student leader in the class, you're gonna call on that student, you're gonna say all eyes on, whatever the student's name is, all eyes on Tom. Everybody turns and looks at Tom. Tom stands up, he leads the answer with the rest of the class, and I'm telling you, then you say, I'm looking for the next leader to stand up and lead the class. And this is um, a little sticker or a Skittle. Okay. We have something even better for that. Instead of giving out candy and giving out stickers, we say no to Oriental trading. We say no to stickers and we say no to Skittles. Um, I'm gonna give you a little And this is our super improvers wall. Now, if you really, really, really want to give a sticker for something, look over here. You see I got a couple sticker stars on here. And let me tell you how they got that sticker. It's not easy. So whatever skill we're working on, so for example, if we've just started using a new brainy at the beginning of the year, when we very first started using the complete sentences with a capital 
and a period at the end or punctuation at the end. When I saw a student who could do that well and they stood up, they called the class and they led the class with an answer with a capital and a period at the end, they got to earn a sticker star on their super improvers card. Now at this point in the year, I'm looking for, I'm looking for triple whammies, I'm looking for adders, I'm looking for, we're comparing and contrasting, so I'm looking for students who are able to take two object, two items that we're learning about and that they're able to compare and contrast. And so let me tell you, if you haven't checked out Super Improvers, you got to go onto the Whole Brain Teaching website and check out the Super Improvers wall because that is the hugest way. The minute that they see a kid get a sticker on their star they want to get a sticker on their star as well but remember we're not just giving out those stickers left and right it's for whatever our new skill is and it's who can do this new skill and let me tell you they get really excited and they rise to the occasion so I know we kind of veered away from Biffy tunes I'm hoping this will help you a little bit with participation because oftentimes our kiddos don't necessarily know what gestures to do, but if you want to get that engagement, don't forget, you're going to use your class yes, you're going to call the kids. When I say class, you say yes. When I say class and you say yes, first you got to stop what you're doing, look at your teacher, and fold your hands. You do not want to teach your students unless you've got all of them with you. Then immediately from the class yes, the minute you start talking, you're going to use your mirror words. And this is going to be your whole class engagement activator. The kids are doing the gestures with you. Now, what are you going to do to get them going? Well, you're going to ping pong them back and forth on the scoreboard. When they do it too slow, like right away, when they do the mirror words, even if you have 100% engagement and everybody's got their mirror words, you're going to go to the saddy side. You're going to make a mark on the mighty, on the sad side and say, mighty grown. And they say, oh. And you're going to say too slow. Why? Because they can always be faster and better. So let's try it again. They tried again. Oh, that was much better. Everybody says, oh, yeah, too slow. Oh, yeah, you're going to go back and forth ping-ponging them on the board. I'll give you a quick demonstration over here. I can't help myself. And take a look really quick. So over here, we're at level five. So we're at boys versus girls. Okay? So when we're ping-ponging, we're going back and forth. So I might say, oh, I saw a boy, great job, say oh yeah, oh too slow, mighty grown, too slow, mighty grown, much better and oh yeah. So when you're doing the scoreboard, and we'll, we'll do another scope where we go just a little bit more in depth about that ping ponging, but you don't want to have your scoreboard be just your go-to place when your kids are not doing a good job. When you see that they need a little bit of work on their participation, you're going to spend just a couple minutes on that scoreboard ping ponging them back and forth on the scoreboard to get their motivation going. So. Anyway, I hope this helps a little bit with the Biffy Tunes. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about the oral writing with the Biffy Tunes. And we're also going to go into some Biffy Tune games. So I hope you all are able to join me here. Tuesdays is my new day. Uh, my new time is 4 o'clock, not 2.30. I rewatched last week and saw that I said 2.30. That's my old time. So I'm doing Tuesdays at 4 o'clock. And I hope to see you guys here next week. So you have a good Good evening and thanks again. Again, Andrea Schindler from Whole Brain Teaching. Any materials that I've discussed is on the Whole Brain Teaching website and they are free. How many do I expect them to have by, by the year end? We do 42. And it's 42 that they can read and that they can spell. So that's all the levels. And I feel really bad because this happens, I don't know why, midway through, oh, thank you so much, midway through when I'm doing these scopes, for some reason, all of a sudden, the comments get stuck at the bottom, and I haven't quite figured that out, but if you have questions, and I haven't seen them, I always watch the, the broadcast again, and I try to answer the questions on the next broadcast, so thank you all for joining me here, and um, if you don't have the day off tomorrow, have a blessed day tomorrow, um, hopefully. Um, I will get a little bit of a sleep in tomorrow, but we'll see. So, okay. Bye, you guys. See you later.